Hello, I'm Dr. Holly Daniels coming to you from Sober College Studios in Los Angeles, California, and this is a Mental Health Moment. If you've been watching, you'll know that I mention the concept of mindfulness in many other mental health moments. In fact, mindfulness is probably one of the most commonly agreed upon techniques among mental health professionals that can be used to help clients feel calmer, happier, and better overall. So we're going to talk about mindfulness today. What is mindfulness? Well, when you're mindful, it's just another way of saying that you're paying attention in the present moment to what you are doing while you are doing it. I like to say that being mindful means that your mind is where your body is, not wandering around in the past or the future. In other words, while your body is here watching this mental health moment, your mind is here also, paying attention in the moment to my words as well as what else is going on around you in your space at the moment. Now, you're not thinking about something that happened last week, something that has to be done this weekend. When we're able to be more mindful and be in the present moment, not be worried about past or future, or have our mind thinking of all different things at once, guess what happens? We feel more calm. Our bodies are healthier. We have lower blood pressure, better digestion, lower levels of inflammation-inducing stress hormones. We do better at school and at our jobs. We have better feeling relationships, and we're all around much happier. But guess what? It's not so easy to be mindful. And why is that? Well, it just so happens that our brains are not necessarily built to be mindful. The thing about the brain is that it's always thinking. It was built to keep thinking. The heart beats, the lungs breathe, and the brain thinks. It's just what it does. Even further, it's built to be thinking about what went wrong or what might go wrong in order to keep us safe. And you can hear more about this in our mental health moment on negative bias. But just like you can control how you breathe, you can breathe fast or slow, shallow or deep, you can also control how you think. We want to try to control our brains so that we are thinking mindfully, keeping our thoughts concerned with what's happening at the moment as much as possible. Because when we're mindful like that, we feel a whole lot better inside. Our brain has different parts. When we're not mindful, we're often operating from the more primitive, emotion and fear-driven parts of the brain, the amygdala, the other parts of the limbic system that are like the guard dog portion of our brain. It's always looking for danger, always wondering and worrying about what could happen, what might be scary or upsetting. The guard dog part of your brain is just trying to keep you safe, which is important, but sadly, it's not very mindful. So just like the guard dog in your neighborhood, the guard dog part in your brain gets startled easily. It worries easily. It ruminates easily. It thinks about all different kinds of things all the time. But we have another really important part of our brain that has the capacity to be mindful, and that's the prefrontal cortex up here in the front of your head. The prefrontal cortex is like the wise owl part of the brain. It helps us be wise, mindful, pay attention to what we're doing as we're doing it. Now, we're born with a stronger guard dog than wise owl. Why is that? Well, the first reason has to do with our brain size at birth. Having a fully developed brain at birth would make our heads huge and make birth very difficult. So we're born without a fully realized prefrontal cortex, and the primitive parts of the brain take precedence. They need to be fully formed at birth because they control our physical and autonomic body functions, which we need to survive. Well, the second reason is that there's actually a very weak connection between the more mindful wise owl prefrontal cortex and the fear-driven guard dog limbic system. And in order to create a dynamic in the brain in which the prefrontal cortex is running the show, we need to form strong connections between the prefrontal cortex and the limbic system. And that doesn't happen automatically. So to be more mindful and get all of those benefits that being more mindful brings, lower blood pressure, better digestion, less cortisol, more serotonin, more satisfying relationships, we need to strengthen our wise owl mind, the prefrontal cortex, and we also have to strengthen the connections between the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex. When we strengthen the prefrontal cortex and create those stronger connections between the wise owl mind and the guard dog mind, when that guard dog mind is really active, the wise owl can talk to the guard dog and say, it's all right, we're going to be okay. Let's check, are we safe? Yes, then we don't need to worry. We, we don't need to keep thinking about the other things. We can be calm and focus on right now and be more mindful. And then you can respond to any situation in a calm, cool, collected manner, even if the situation is difficult or tense. 
Some of you may have experienced moments of being truly mindful if you've ever been in a life-threatening emergency situation and you had to take action very quickly. In that situation, many people report having the strong sense of clarity and calm that doesn't necessarily match the danger of the situation. This is because the brain is wired so that in crisis, the limbic system and prefrontal cortex automatically integrate quickly, which is why we tend to be able to immediately prioritize the things that are most important and able to stay focused focused on staying alive. This mindful sense of flow is also something we can experience when we're super passionate about something and all of our emotional and logical energy is focused on one thing, like playing a sport or doing a painting. The trick is to practice this strong connection and integration of limbic system and prefrontal cortex when we're not in crisis so that we can practice being simultaneously alert and engaged, calm and observant, even when we're experiencing something stressful. So how do we practice being mindful so that we can strengthen our wise owl mind and strengthen the connections between the wise owl mind and the guard dog mind? Meditation is the traditional mindful practice. When we still our bodies and minds, focus on our breathing or on a mantra, and just practice observing what is happening in our bodies and our minds. For some people, more active mindfulness practice is a little easier. Yoga or mindful walking because the motion of the body can be an easier anchor for your attention so that you can stay in the moment, keeping your mind where your body is. You can also practice mindful listening, mindful eating. Really, you can bring mindfulness practice into everyday activities throughout the whole day. If your mind is in the present, if you feel calm and alert and are able to observe your feelings and your thoughts without judgment, you're practicing mindfulness wherever you are. The important thing to know is that to become more mindful and to reap all the benefits that mindfulness brings, you have to practice. The more you practice mindfulness, the stronger those connections will become between your limbic system and your prefrontal cortex, and the more accustomed your brain will be to responding mindfully and not reacting emotionally. So regular practice is the way to go. Now for help with a mindfulness practice, there are many YouTube videos and mindfulness apps that you can try. You can also ask your therapist or a local mindfulness teacher for help and mentoring for your own mindfulness practice. I hope this helped with your understanding of mindfulness and the benefits of practicing mindfulness. As always, we'd love to hear your questions and comments, so please send us an email to the address on the screen. I'm Dr. Holly Daniels, wishing you all health and happiness.